This has to be the craziest. Nah, I, I mean, you could could have said that a number of times along the way as smartphones got launched. You could say, this is the craziest look we've ever seen on a flagship. I guess crazy keeps changing. Uh. Things keep escalating. Mm. The smartphone camera crossover accelerates. And today we have the Huawei P50 to take the cake for maximum overboard stuff camera status now we talked about this device when there were just some rumors about it and they there was like a case that leaked and they're like yeah it's gonna have these big giant camera units on the back a couple of circles back there but now it's official and while we put out the images themselves yeah. they had an event they were mostly in the event talking about harmony os Cause they're like, look, we're out, we're still out here, we're scrapping, we got an OS. I mean, they didn't use those words. <laughs> it's a big deal for them. Well, I mean, I don't, man. Huh? The whole world got flipped upside down for them. You imagine going to the drawing board and being like, yeah, we gotta get this OS going. They're like, what does that OS have to do? Oh, I don't know, compete with Google and Apple. Oh, <laughs> bro, those guys. Yeah. Those those two scoundrels. Google and Apple. Yeah, we can do that. No big deal. Yeah. Put together a little OS that's just as good and can convince people. Like, I know you might be looking at me saying, hey, man, take it easy. But that, my laughter there, my chuckling is just in relation to the scope of the challenge. Yeah. The daunting task. I mean, it oh. is just like, it's like Mount Everest software wise. Uh -huh. To create a compelling piece of software that you truly think can compete with either of those players at this point now. Because it's not just the software itself, as you know, it's the entire app ecosystem that exists uh -huh. on each platform as a consequence of the footprint occupied by each of those two platforms, well established and been around forever. It's not like Huawei has much of a choice. But it is. it does get to a point where as a tech fan, you look at some of this hardware, because they were doing some things with hardware that were interesting. And you look at hardware like this P50 series and think of it, of it what you will as far as being maybe hilari hilariously large for cameras. I don't really care. I would goof with that right there. Yeah, this is, this is nice. This is very nice. I got to see it in person if like how accentuated it is in this particular photo. Right. But these things are becoming cameras and, and every single larger camera module along the way, people laughed at for a while until they were like, oh, that's just what it is now. Like I got this mock-up over here of the upcoming iPhone 13 Pro Max. Look at the size of this thing over here. Now you might look at that and say, well, I'm sort of used to that because I saw the iPhone 12. But like this, I'm just reaching. I got like all kinds of props over here. This was big at the time when uh -huh. Apple added the second camera <laughs> and you saw this and you're like, oh, cool. We got two cameras, but unfortunately there's a hump. Like that was a thing we talked about with this. Uh, what is this? iPhone 10. Am I right? That's iPhone 10. And now you have what? The Note. Look at this. The Note 21. Look at this. All right. People get over it. They move on and they go, what can the camera do? Uh, image uh, sensor shift technology and uh, periscope style folded zoom. If you can make the case with the tech, people will put up with these larger modules and say, you know what? Sure. Like I'm looking at the bottom camera there. It's a single lens on that unit. You can imagine a giant sensor hiding beneath there. You can imagine a giant aperture living in that lens. Like, I don't know what the layout is. They didn't go into too much detail because they were mostly focused on Harmony OS 2.0 in this event. They just had this tiny teaser. And actually, the teaser was strange because they were like, uh, this spring? They said something about the spring. Like, this is their new phone for the spring. And it's like, what? Timing-wise, was it originally planned for the spring? Had they not had the software issues? Yes. 
because the spring is obviously coming to an end. So, and will we, will it ever come out? Will we ever see it? Are they talking about a year from now? It doesn't seem right if the hardware is ready to go. Uh -huh. So, it's all very confusing. So, this would be the first phone to run Harmony OS 2.0? I believe up until this point, as far as commercially available products, they've only been putting this OS into their other products outside of smartphones, like uh, TVs and their whatever, this ecosystem laptop. of external... Or Mate Pad? Is that what it's called? The iPad equivalent. Like the yeah, what is, what is the name of that? No, it's not called Mate Pad. Uh, maybe. Mate Tab? Mate? It's got Mate in it. Go ahead, Will. Tell us what it's called. Oh, yeah, MatePad Pro. Yeah. Wow. This... Well done, Will. Is yeah, that so... how it looks like? Jesus. That looks, that looks like a competitor there. Oh. We are... So what? You're saying it looks like Samsung or Apple? Apple. Yeah. With the, uh, the bar. Oh. I would like to give it a shot. I want to try. I mean, obviously, yeah. it's interesting. Any OS in this era, we were talking the other day about Google's new Fuchsia thing. Developers in the comments were laughing at us. They're like, these guys don't know what they're talking about. And they're right. But as from a user perspective, which is mostly where we live from an analysis standpoint and stuff that we do, it is interesting to get your hands on this on this on these alternative platforms to see if there really is a shot, to see if anything's happening differently. Now, mostly in Android space, I wasn't such a huge fan of some of the heavy skins that manufacturers were making and modifications, because another part of it is like how many OSs in the mobile space can remain natural for you. There's enough people that have difficulty just moving cross-platform from iOS to Android. It's just uh -huh. like, I'm just, that's me. I, that's comfy. That's a comfy spot for me. I don't want to move over there. But here's a situation where it was motivated out of necessity. Now, the other thing to mention is as difficult as it will be to compete with the likes of Google and Apple outside of China, maybe inside China, where Huawei has had tremendous success, maybe that pitch is different when they say, hey, use an all Chinese OS and hardware from the ground up that, that, that could be compelling to users that are, that are local. So maybe where they give up some opportunity outside the country, maybe they gather it back inside the country. Yeah. But it's going to be almost a nearly impossible pitch outside of China to for people to purchase this extra OS at this point and then wonder if, like, you know, where's my YouTube and Google services, Google apps. And uh, I heard if you can get Facebook to work, but, like, it's, man... Will it even work with telecommunications, cellular, like 4G stuff, 5G? Well, that they can figure out on the hardware side. Yeah. That okay. they can figure out, but it's 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 more whether ecosystem. or not yeah whether or not developers choose to embrace and develop for a brand new platform that may or may not fit well within their business model. I mean, for a long time. We talked about a number of apps that were paying more attention to one platform over the other because it made more economic sense for them and they have limited resources. Now you say, I mean, we, we, we saw this happen with BlackBerry and, and um, BlackBerry eventually was built on top of Android, but anywhere we've seen a push to get developers on an extra uh, Palm. Yeah. Palm OS, man, this stuff feels like a billion years ago. And even before that, even before iOS, I, I had one of those Treo devices, even before you had the, the later Palm operating systems. And so it's always been the catch is like your device is as good as the apps that you can get on it. And you can have this is super elaborate hardware and maybe I'll pick one up just to use the camera and that's that. But if you can't get all the apps and services that you're used to using or you need to use, you're not going to make that compromise. Carry two phones. <laughs> Some people do that. Yeah. I'm not prepared to do such a thing. But either way, they piqued my interest. They're just like more camera. It looks like one, two, three, four cameras there. And I'm most interested in the one that occupies the bottom camera cutout by itself. What you doing over there? Type of sensor we got. 
We got a, we got a, do we have a one inch sensor under there? Because you know, we had this story the other day. It was sharp who were going to be the first to put a one inch sensor into a smartphone. Is that hiding in there, Huawei? Send one over, whatever. We'll talk about it. Send one over. We'll boot up Harmony OS or whatever you got and talk about it yeah. and, and uh, shoot some samples or whatever. And I mean, talk about it through the lens of the current state of things. Uh-huh. It looks great. Through, the through the lens. Oh. Will do, Will do's a fan, so I don't know. I don't yeah. know what that. I don't know what that means. I to like you. the design. I don't know what that means to you, Huawei. <laughs> it means nothing. <laughs> no, remember, remember, you said that companies <laughs> like Huawei have a soft spot for it. You said earlier. <laughs> sure, whatever you say. No, you said it. I didn't say it. You said it. Uh, I was like, why, Will? You're like, I don't know. I can't tell you. They just really yeah. like me. I was like, really? Wow. Paraphrasing <laughs> again, but yeah. <laughs> Today's sponsor, Freshly. Dinner time can be chaotic, but with Freshly, it's easy. Their chefs take care of your meals a few nights a week and take the pressure off you. We're all trying to get in shape and eat, right? I am, aren't you, Will? I see you jogging around the studio these days. Uh-huh. Rather than just walk to the other end, because it's a big place. You pick up the pace a little bit. Yeah. Get the heart up a little bit. I mean, that's all of us. We're trying to do that. 2021 is too easy to just sit behind the thing, eat some garbage and call it a day and go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Can't be doing that. You know what they say, Will? Use it or lose it. (laughs) Use it or lose it. You hear me? I hear you, yes. And eat healthy along the way. It makes it easier to use it because you're feeling better, more energetic. Their delicious meals are designed by nutritionists and cooked by chefs, making it easier to eat better. So even you, yourself, are challenged as far as the cooking portion is concerned. Their chefs put it together, fully prepared meals, then delivered fresh to you, and then ready to eat in three minutes. You just got to heat it up. Like, you can't screw this one up. Yeah, that's easy. That's great. I mean, maybe you could screw it up. (laughs) (laughs) I'm joking. Stop it. Stressed, tired, just don't like cooking. Food that's fast doesn't have to be fast food. Said before, I'll say it again. Freshly offers quality meals without the hard work of prepping, cooking, clean. Look at these dishes over here. What is that? Some chili? Unbelievable stuff. Steak, pepper, corn, home style chicken. Cauliflower shell, beef bolognese. I know you're hungry just listening to this. Ordering is very easy to do. Visit Freshly.com and choose from over 30 delicious, satisfying, better-for-you meals. Sausage, baked, penne, chicken, pesto bowl. Freshly fits your lifestyle. And now listeners to, of this show can try Freshly for just $6.16 per meal. So stop searching the internet for healthy food near you. Just head over to Freshly, $6.16 per meal. So right now, Freshly is offering our listeners over $40 off, $40 off, exactly $40 off your first two orders. When you go to Freshly.com slash Lou later, stop stressing about dinner. Go to Freshly.com slash Lou later for $40 off your first two orders. That's Freshly.com slash Lou later, or click the link in the description if that's easier. Make sure you get your 40 bucks off. All right, let's talk a little bit more about Huawei's new operating system. That is what they spent the majority of their time on. They launched Harmony OS on the flagship Mate 40. So here's the details you were looking for. So it is going to be on the phones, Mate 40 and Mate X2 smartphone. Mm. Official. The Watch Series 3 also gets Harmony OS. So they're creating an ecosystem. They're going to do the Apple thing. Man, that's ambitious. Mm. And the Mate Pad Pro tablet. That's the one that you talked about. They have, uh, of course, pivoted after U.S. sanctions have hurt their business and made it very hard uh, for them to not only figure out software, but even just hardware trading partners because there's been restrictions on that. Huawei builds Harmony OS as an operating system that can work across many Internet-connected devices. So that includes smartphones, wearables, and, of course, TVs, which I I, I don't know why I recall that that was one of the earliest ones they did. 
Um, now, there is a benefit to having one OS across your devices from the manufacturer of the hardware. Apple has proven that. There's an incentive there because things can sort of work together a little more smoothly than the more open-ended OSs like Android or Windows, Microsoft, where you have a number of different hardware manufacturers building devices for that software. It can be a little bit more complicated from a compatibility issue. That doesn't mean it's going to be easy to build in the first place, but if they can achieve such a thing, that will be unique in the marketplace. Uh, here's a quote from Ben Wood, the chief analyst at CCS Insight. Harmony OS is designed to provide the glue between a growing array of connected devices that Huawei is targeting. Huawei is, uh, will be hoping that it can follow Apple's lead by having a single software platform that extends in all directions, providing a seamless experience to customers that buy into its ecosystem of products. So, Will, are you saying that Huawei is the next Apple? Is that what you just said to me? Well, it would be nice to have a competitor as such. You know what I mean? Where everything is just singular, the OS, hardware. Yeah. So Huawei's the next Apple, sure, signed yeah. Willie Do. Wow. Big statements over here. Uh, speaking of Apple, how's this for a concept phone? This Now, first of all, this is absolutely never going to happen. It looks to have drawn some inspiration from that Xiaomi device, which had the screen on the back. And this one looks like it has an even bigger screen. You can see... First of all, they're calling it the iPhone 14. It has four camera modules, a screen to the right of the camera section, and then a screen below that. Or is it one seamless screen? Either way, uh, the top portion there is looking like it's telling you your battery capacity of your connected devices to the phone. So you can quickly glance at the phone's battery, the watch battery if you have it, and headphone battery. This video is kind of nicely put together. Very realistic renders. Yeah, with the shout out uh, Yanko. They it, do a lot of. It, but design. is it Yanko that did this though, or did they just embed it and post oh, it? Oh, maybe they just presented it. Yeah, uh, the concept is from the mind of Max Burgos. Oh, concepts iPhone is the YouTube channel. Anyway, yeah. So Yanko's always bringing these type of stories, though. Oh, so okay. shout out to them anyway. Um. It, I, like it's not a thing this is like a, one of those fun dreaming things like oh imagine if they did this but i do like the render quality on that man that's pretty wild way to put that uh -huh. together and the screen on the back does have some utility for taking photos with the better camera but there's no way apple's not doing it i'm just gonna tell you right now by the way did that xiaomi device ever show up here with the screen on the back yes it is here i gotta check that out uh -huh. i gotta check that out so, yeah, while this may never happen, how about never say never? Because Cyberpunk and Blade Runner, I mean, they all, t I mean, look what the stuff that's supposed to happen. Never say never. Cars are supposed to fly at some point. Yeah, hopefully soon. It comes in purple. Well, that's nice. Yeah. I don't know about the placement of the Apple logo there. Seems, oh. Seems a little off. Yeah, you're right. But where do you put it? Maybe you get rid of it like yeah. the iMac. You just say, you know what? Can't fit that one in there. Uh -huh. How about that for a wild render? Oh, we have one more wild render. This one coming via 9 to 5 Mac and put together by Antonio De Rosa. And this is a Mac Pro concept, which is maybe a little closer to feasible, although still quite avant-garde. Uh, this seems to draw some level of inspiration from earlier Macs with that flat front and the uh, the thing that looks like a disk drive, but actually in this case is a USB, a couple of USB ports and I think a, an SD card reader possibly. It has a handle on it and then on the back is where things get interesting because it looks so slim and trim, almost like, I don't know, two Mac minis attached at the hip. Uh -huh. But then you get this top portion, which in this design makes the system modular, and these modules would be, could be, would be storage or GPUs or, well, any variety of things that you might need. If you scroll down, there's actually a, 
another really cool video clip showcasing how this might work. Now, there's been a rumor for a while that Apple was going to do maybe keep the current Mac Pro form factor for those that want the super traditional tower situation, but then rethink a more minimal version hmm. considering how powerful the M1 chip is and how it's been received by the community and the fact that there's improvements that are set to come out. Like people are amazed at what they're doing with the Mac mini. And you can see the backside of that, that sort of has a similar look to it. And so it's not, it's not that crazy to imagine a smaller desktop Mac pro, but I still don't think it's going to look like this. But imagine, um, imagine slotting those modules in like as if they were a game cartridge, like uh -huh. new GPU. They got to blow on it first. I probably wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> probably wouldn't recommend that. Yeah. Um, all right, last Apple-related story. iPhone 13, good news with the iPhone 13. We knew it was going to be fatter. We knew with the new display technology and... Supporting ProMotion is what Apple calls a high refresh. And presumably having to fit a battery that can provide similar battery figures performance while compensating for that increased refresh rate. You were just like, okay, it's got to be a bit fatter, the phone. And then we did the measurements on the model unit that I've had over here, did the official measurements on Unbox Therapy. And sure enough, even this model is already a bit fatter ever so slightly. But the good news is it appears it is going to come alongside better battery capacity, bigger battery capacity. And we have some figures here, courtesy Love to Dream. Uh, according to this rumor, the iPhone 13 Pro Max gets 4,352 milliamp hours compared to the current 3687 on the 12 Pro Max. That's quite an improvement. Well, that's almost 1,000 extra milliamp hours. Mm. We're getting closer to that 5,000. Last a couple of days? Now, here's the other thing. They got the new chip, the A15, which is apparently more efficient as well. Yep. So maybe you're seeing some banana town battery life, but it is important to note it's going to have to deal with this 120 hertz. But I'm sure they're going to put some dynamic switching in there that when you're not going to need it, it's going to turn it off, and they're going to just try to be power efficient about how they give you 120. So I think it's not crazy to say that we may see uh, some of the best iPhone battery life ever on the next generation. And I like that as opposed to just always having to make things thinner. Battery life, man, from day to day, that's you use that. That's life. Yeah. Life in the fast lane, man. And if it's a little bit thicker for an iPhone, yeah, it's so not what, too bad. Man. All right. How about the regular 13 Pro? Supposedly that's going to be 3095 which is up from 2815 And then the Mini goes to 2406 milliamp hours from 2227. So the biggest improvement, obviously, is on the Pro Max model. That's likely going to be your battery performer if uh, if that's what you're into. You might get that two-day, that uh, mysterious, coveted, uh, foggy two-day battery mm. that we, we've all one um, imagined mm -hmm. we've all i don't know what i'm trying I don't, know, I, don't, I don't know how i'm trying to phrase this yeah. it the, it's very legendary it's always been actually never mind two day i want one week never mind two day let's not go that far i want one week one week battery it's weird. You just get used to it. You're just like, yeah, you charge every day. Like, I've been wearing this watch. I charge it every day. Uh -huh. Get used to it. And that's the target. Let's just make sure they do it every day. Yeah. They get one day out a of it. full 24 hours. Let's make sure they get one day out of it. But I was goofing with that HP, that new um, Elite Folio. Actually, the video's not even out yet. Whatever. <laughs> Keep an eye out for it. And it's got a Snapdragon chip in it, even though it's like a convertible laptop thing and they were stating 24 hours of battery life or uh, 20 hours of video watching and then over the weekend i never plugged it in once i was using that at home mm. never plugged it in once so this idea is very 
captivating to me. Yes. And uh, I get excited about battery tech and charge tech. Yeah. Hopefully they can go with uh, really fast wireless charging as well. Yeah, put it all in there. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're not asking for a lot here. Be nice with it. We. Who was saying that the other day? He's nice with it. Oh, it was Dave Chappelle on Rogan's podcast. Dave Chappelle. Yeah, he kept saying, you know what? He's nice with it. He's nice with it. And I like that. I, that stood out to me as well. He kept going there. That there was go. his current lingo. <laughs> YouTube is introducing a new feature, has already introduced for a number of select individuals. This is one that I have just wanted for a very long time. I don't even know if we talked about it on this show before, but... It's there. It's coming out. We are talking about the loop button. Whoa. You can finally take a video or song and just wait a sec. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Easy on the expressions over there. You got a problem with this? Don't they have this already? No, they never had that. You right click on the video loop. Is that what are we talking about? What are you talking about? Oh, what? What is right click loop? Uh, Show me right-click loop. How dare you? I mean, come on. Yeah, right here. Okay, do it. What happens? Click it. Well, it loops after it's Okay, go, go to the end. Let's verify this right now. It, it, it's only going to loop once. It's not going to loop. Are you sure? It, what, you think it's going to loop indefinitely? That's what the loop feature is, right? Okay, it do it. Okay, let's do it right now. Do it right now, then. Oh, we have a minute to go. But what do you mean a minute? Oh yeah, fast I'm just forward. Skipping, yeah. Let's do it right now. We'll get to the bottom of it once and for all for the people out there. So you get to the end of this video. I don't doubt that it's gonna loop once, but I don't believe it's gonna loop indefinitely. There okay. you go. Yep, go to the end now. Oh, you know what? If this ends up working, which we're finding out this captivating moment right here. Oh, <laughs> look at that. What happened there? It it's, will uh, loop indefinitely. Yeah. Okay. So I've never used a feature on desktop, but certainly the feature has not been there on the app. There's oh, no right click. Mean- there's no right click loop. So that must be why I'm confused. I, I've never actually looped on the desktop. Oh, so this is for um, mobile. From Yeah, for the app. Oh, okay. For the YouTube app. But I, I, no, I was curious about the other thing as well, which is why I wanted right. to see if it actually worked, which shout out to Willie Do for yeah. enlightening all of us. Yeah. Just just do the right-click loop if you're on, if you're in Chrome. But uh, actually, Will, even in the YouTube Music app up until recently... Uh-huh. The loop function wasn't there, depending on the source. Oh, right. Anyway, it's rolling out to more people now. Uh, a proper loop button for mobile. The button was first spotted by Droid May several days ago, but it seemed to be a super limited test. It's rolling out to more people now. You can see what it looks like there. So it's actually hidden inside of the, well, not hidden, but it's inside of the uh, menu that pops up for video quality and, mm. and other features as opposed to being buried via right click or whatever you have to do on chrome and this is in the app so if you enjoy like a soundtrack or you like a um whatever who who get a shout out uh, chilled cow or something like this yeah and you want to your and you use the app or you use mobile mostly to listen to it now you can have it just continuously play Mm -hmm. and loop over and this is also useful if you're really into a particular song at a moment and it's a short song and you want it to just play over and over again it's in there and apparently not everybody has it but it's rolling out to even more people yeah here you go it's curious that youtube hadn't implemented it yet on mobile even on the web it already exists it's hidden under the right click menu. so they even on the web they don't really want you to do it because I mean, it's not in the in the cog. Menu. Yeah, why wouldn't they put it there if they cared to have you use it? It's really interesting. I mean, they've got loop along with copy debug info 
and stats for nerds. Like it's, right. it goes to show you how much they care about it. But really where it needs to be anyway is on the app because that's where you're likely to be listening to music. Mm -hmm. That's where you're more likely to be uh, utilizing a feature, at least for me. Yes, I agree. Which is the reason I was shocked when you're like, I'm looping over here. Are you looping? Well, you're looping. You're loopy. All of the above. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Go on your mobile app. See if the feature's there for you. Hit the hit the little cog and see what you see. Uh, we have a little bit of a leak here. M many people were asking about this. I think they were asking you about it in a chat. The WF-1000XM4 new Sony fully wireless earbuds this video came out which looks like an official sony video hmm. and it was posted it's still up they didn't even bother to take it down so they're just like all right we're gonna listen we're gonna introduce it soon just let people get a little head start on it they're pretty cool looking they have these like metallic elements on the outside they have they have a pretty uh nice design language going on with the xm stuff like the earbuds kind of feel like the over ears. Mm -hmm. There's like a similarity there. Uh, now people are excited because they've been so dominant. They've delivered some really amazing products in the XM lineup. And now, of course, they're on XM4 as far as the premium earbuds go. I think this video leaked in, I'm trying to figure out what that language is. Is that uh, Dutch or German? No, I think it's Dutch. Anyway. That must, it was, it looked like it was going to be a promo video for that particular market. And sure enough, here we are getting the full exposure of the case. You can see like even specs, five minute charge for 60 minutes of listening. I think there's more specs in here too. Uh, it's like a spatial audio feature. Yeah. So listen to this, uh, industry leading noise cancellation. The, the earbuds will feature Sony's integrated V1 processor, new drivers for a fuller, richer sound, support for LDAC and high-res audio, and DSEE Extreme AI technology to reproduce frequency responses in the original sound source lost during compression. It's going to have speak-to-chat function to automatically pause playback when you start a conversation. This was the thing that the Samsung Buds were attempting to do. It was a little hit and miss in my experience. But it is a cool feature if it works. You just start talking and they pause. I love it. Mm -hmm. And of course, it also has Sony's adaptive sound control for adjusting ambient sound. So you can really fine tune external noises versus your music mm. within the app. It's not just like a couple of settings. It's granular capabilities, which is kind of nice. Uh, we'll also have Google Assistant and Alexa support, wireless charging, IPX4 certification, and in total, with the charge case, 24 hours of playback with active noise canceling turned on. If you turn noise canceling off, you can get up to 36 hours of usage with the charge case. That's a lot. Mm. 36 hours. It's like a few days, Will. It's impressive. Of listening. Now, apparently, the so the previous iteration was $230. The expectation here is it'll be about 250 bucks. So it's not a cheap. It's going up against the likes of the... AirPods Pro and things like that. It's not a not going to be an affordable one. It's going to be a premium one. Hmm. Tesla's recalling nearly 6,000 cars. Got some loose bolts on there. You don't want that. Oh, oh. You don't you don't like those loose bolts. You know, I got a story actually. One time I had had uh I, I had my car get the tires changed winter tires. Yeah, Vin told me this story. Harrowing. Wait, Vin told you this story? Was it him or me that experienced it? Or did he experience the same thing or he was telling my story? I'm, he was I, telling your story. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I had the tires changed and it was at like a reputable place. Mm. And I don't know if this just, this was many years ago, but I don't know if the individual got sidetracked that was working on it or what happened, but one of the tires was not very tight. Like the the bolts, they had not been tightened very well, and it. I drove out and everything felt fine, but by the time I hit the main street, I, it was I. I realized something was really off because mm -hmm. I was getting, you know, I knew something was off, mm -hmm. and so sure enough, I get out of the car, and the actual many of the lugs are actually just spewing about 
Mm. And the thing was barely hanging on there. The tire was just, it was just the bolt. And it easily, if I had it kept going, uh-huh. it's coming off. I'm crashing. Ugly, yeah. ugly sight. Wouldn't it be a unbox therapy? But anyway, that's not the manufacturer. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I don't think. been done. I don't think I would. I don't think that one was going to take me out permanently. But uh, that's not from the manufacturer. That was just a mishap, a, a one-off at a particular shop. I'm sure many people in the comments have had experiences like uh-huh. this. Uh, it was at that point I started driving trucks, and then I never worried about winter tires ever again. Mm. Just get a Ford Raptor and... You know, you, yeah, just get one of those. <laughs> what do you mean good. winter? What? <laughs> just be done with winter tires. Yeah, changing tires, like I do it myself. And yeah. It's, um, you got to test it. You got to drive like uh, Yeah. Like 5K, well, actually, after, just to test it. After then, I had that experience, I just like, I'm just switching it myself the next time around. Yeah. Because it's doable. Just take the afternoon, you know? Yeah. It's easy, but you got to do the necessary steps. I guess. Yeah. Have yourself a nice tea or something. Is that what you do? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like if you're out there changing tires, if it's hot, yeah, maybe it's have an, fun, I don't know, have an iced tea maybe. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. You're not drink, you don't drink those iced teas, do you? I'm a fan. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Long Island or otherwise. I, mean, I went to Starbucks today and, and the person on, uh, on the microphone was mm-hmm. like, uh, he said something along the lines of, hi there, I'm, I'm your... You reached a you reached the right guy for some coffee today or something like that. Like you know, they were just you know how they jazz it up. Whoa. You know how they jazz it up. Sure, yeah. And then I knew I was getting an iced tea. Yeah. I just wanted something refreshing. I was I already had multiple coffees. I was like, you know what? Yeah. I'm gonna get this iced tea right now. And but what was weird is I I felt the need afterwards because he had pitched the coffee. I was like, oh damn, I gotta. He sold you on it. Well, he didn't, but I was just like, okay, now I can't just order the tea. I had to add a little, put a little precursor is yeah. what I did. And I said, actually, you know what? It's not going to be a coffee for me today. It's going. I'm actually going to go for an iced tea. So his energy, you try to match it. It was just a, yeah. it was a thing. I hear you. You know? Yeah. It was a thing like that. But anyway, the iced tea was beautiful. Okay. Big iced tea. And I don't even get the lemonade in it because they have a whole fancy lemonade situation where they're like, you want the lemonade in there? Any pumps of sugar? One. Oh, in the ve- daring. In the venti size. you're old. <laughs> in the venti size. Yeah. Is what I do. Okay. One or zero sometimes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like I don't, it's just the simplest black tea with ice in it mm-hmm. is really what it is. It's quite boring actually, but it re- it's surprisingly refreshing. Yes. And so that's probably why I had it on my mind when I was like, I'm just picturing you switch the tires. I'm like, man, the guy needs a cold drink because it's been hot over there. For sure, yeah. I'll take an iced tea. So I was just trying to take care of you, that's all. Anyway, in the case of Tesla, these loose bolts, I believe, are on a brake caliper, apparently affected vehicles, 2019 to 2021 Model 3 vehicles and 2020 to 2021 Model Y vehicles. Uh, They want to replace, inspect, and or tighten the caliper bolts as necessary. The caliper bolts allow the brake caliper to separate and contact the wheel rim, which could cause a loss of tire pressure in very rare circumstances. The company said that in the unlikely event there is vehicle damage from a loose or missing fastener, it will arrange for a tow to the nearest service center for repair. But of course, they'd like to just get the recall done. Get that sorted out and fixed up so you don't do any further damage. Now, speaking of Tesla, this next this next article is a video comes from uh, a guy that we featured here a long time ago by the name of uh, P- uh, Slav Popovsky. Do you remember him? Yeah, he did those cool renders yeah, that are he, super realistic. He does these crazy renders, Tesla related renders, and he he does real physics in there. So what he did this time around is he did an animation to showcase just how fast that new Roadster would be if it truly accelerated in what, to 60 in 1.1 seconds with the SpaceX package. Uh, so With the jet engine. These things are already crazy stupid fast. Two seconds, zero to 60 is like, oh, it's like, oh. It takes your breath away. Man, I put my dad in the I put my dad in the uh Titan Turbo S. Yeah. With the launch control. 
Oh my God. That was probably easily the best passenger so far. He was just <laughs> dead. He was Hard like, to breathe. Oh my God. He was like, enough, enough, enough. <laughs> and before I picked him up, my sister was like, hey man, don't don't take it easy. Yeah. Take it easy on that. And I was like, but that's part of the most fun of having these type of cars that accelerate like that. Mm-hmm. Is you just take out a relative or something and you hit them with the acceleration and you don't announce it. Right. And they right. get swung in the back of the seat. <laughs> yeah, it's a funny reaction every time. I should have filmed that, man. That was ridiculous. I should have filmed that. Anyway, this is really cool. He used real calculations and he put the standard tesla roadster up against the spacex package to show you how much faster it actually is and it's shocking it means it's almost twice as fast and you'll see in this animation and look how cool these animations are oh yeah look at it go boom see you later i got a jet boost what about you you got the regular roadster who's gonna want the regular roadster after that uh-huh. nobody slow poke and then this represents the quarter mile that you don't even need car wow for the drag race this guy can do it all in physics <laughs> i think i think yeah pe- they can make like a mars background or something i think people want to see the real thing eventually but this is good for now this is great for now to be able to see this and if the car on the left is pretty much as fast as the other like the plaid and everything else then you just can't even imagine what that feeling is. There's a couple of yeah. couple of G's in there. Uh-huh. I'll tell you that. Shout out Slav Popovsky. Keep it up, man. These are cool. Zero to 60 in 1.1 seconds. Uh, oh, Amazon is now on board with marijuana legalization. They will no longer, I didn't even know they did this, but they will no longer test their employees for... I guess they would do a urine test. I don't even know. Huh. When when they interview you to check for illicit substances. Well, as you know, legalization has swept most of North America. There's a proposal right now for the federal, on the federal level, I believe, in the United States. The Marijuana Opportunity Reinvestment and Expungement Act of 2021 seeks to legalize marijuana at the federal level. Anyway, I think it's it's still on a state-by-state basis for the time being. But, of course, Amazon does business in tremendous number of states, so it would be a bit odd if marijuana was legal and then they're piss-testing you and they're like, yeah, you didn't get the job or you're fired or whatever it happens to be. Now, apparently there are still the usual restrictions for impairment. Like if you're just trying to dr- if you're trying to drive the truck and stuff, you can't be uh-huh. obviously impaired. Um, but if, what you're doing on the, if you know, it sits in your system for a while. So if you, if on a weekend you were just hanging out around the house and then you got something funny to say, what do you got? <laughs> well, you want to disrupt me over here? I'm sorry. It's just, uh, remember that clip that we did yesterday about the screaming? Amazon? I had the same thought. That's just in my head. Like when he, he's driving away and it's just like, ah. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, sorry. I had I the exact, I had the exact same thought actually. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to bring it up after I got through this. Well, yeah, it was a very funny clip. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I feel sorry for the guy. <clears throat> Go look for it on later Hopefully. clips. It's hilarious. It's Hopefully. it's hard to believe, actually. Hopefully he feels better. I think, but... he, I think he feels better. He's got to have a laugh now yeah. at his clip going viral. I wonder if Amazon looks into that. Like, I mean, it's easy for them to figure out who it is, yeah. right? Because yeah. they would know the geography. Anyway. Amazon will no longer screen its job applicants for marijuana use in any positions not regulated by the Department of Transportation. Uh, yeah, marijuana is still a classified substance at the federal level, but that's that may very well change quite soon. Amazon also said it's tweaking its worker productivity tracking tool. Mm. You know, they're trying to keep up with the times and getting criticized left, right, and center on the employment stuff, but... You just imagine the, imagine a company at that scale and making decisions. Everything's mm-hmm. massive and slow and trickles down. Oh, good lord! Efficiencies. Speaking of big companies, maybe not as big as Amazon, but IKEA is pretty big. They've been doing the thing for a while, and they continue 
to stay relevant and create these collaborations. Recently, they had a collaboration with ROG on some gaming related gear, desks and things like that, which I believe we talked about. It's just staying with the times, man. Mm -hmm. And this is another example of it. This actually leaked. I don't because they took it off the website. I don't think they made the announcement yet, but it looks like they teamed up with Sonos for a new frame speaker, whatever that means. The images that were part of the post when it was live on their website make it look kind of like a piece of art almost, mm. which also happens to be a speaker. And in I don't know, I'm kind of curious about what like. They they you they want you to hang this up or lean it against the wall, and not have it have it actually as a feature instead of a speaker that you try to hide or something like that mm. with these designs on it. It's like it almost looks like a picture mm -hmm. that you put on a wall, and of course, by teaming up with Sonos, it's going to be smart. You're going to have all your streaming stuff is going to be capable in there. All your whatever you use. I mean, if it's AirPlay or whatever it is, you're going to be capable of interacting in that way. They're calling it the Symphonisk, Symphonisk picture frame with Wi-Fi speaker. It was listed at $199, even though it hasn't been announced, and the post is now down. Mm. Uh, the picture frame measures 22 inches high, 16 inches wide, and 2 inches deep. Customers can choose between various interchangeable fronts, so you can change the appearance of it, and the frame would be offered in either black or white finishes. Designed to blend into your home decor and not stick out as an obvious tech gadget. So it looks like a piece of art on the wall, stylish, but it's also your speaker. What do you think about this, Will? Yeah, I, I, I do like it. Um, man, I wish they could hide the uh, plug, but there's... No way around that, right? Like in the wall or something. But yeah, you could. I mean, it's like if you wanted to. Yeah. As it, it, like, I mean, like when you mount a TV or something, you, you want to hide the cable. DIY. Yeah, you could do it. You can definitely do it. But if you you get the white one and you happen to have a white wall, yeah, I can really see it that much. Uh, shadows. <laughs> All right. So you're so put a hole in the wall. Sure. Yeah. Feed it through. Call it a day. Yeah, there's no way around it. Uh, it's, you know, it's it's a it's a good idea, I would say. The frame. I mean, your speaker. your other option is to put the power outlet, since that's all you need. You can have the power outlet at the height of the speaker. Yeah. There you go. Like, just have it installed. Some people do that when they mount a TV as well. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's been removed from the website. You're gonna have to wait to see more details because I guess they didn't want it to be out yet. Uh, Google Assistant is getting a new look. And I think this is a key because you and I have talked on many occasions about how we believe that some component in the, in the future, uh, maybe even a major one, is going to be just voice-based interaction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we believe. <laughs> I'm speaking on your behalf, and I'm acting like it's some kind of innovative belief. No, everyone knows this. Yeah. That have you seen we, her? It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like that. Man, someone yeah. needs to make a meme out of that because that's be, been too many times now. It needs to be you, and it just says, have you seen her? Mm -hmm. Because you, 17 times now you've asked me to see a movie that I haven't seen and probably will never see because I don't see anything. Sure, yeah. Anyway, so one of the one of the problems, you interact with Google Assistant, and maybe maybe one of the ways you do this is in the car. Because that's one of the one of the times that I feel really compelled to use voice instead of any other input. Because you're driving. Mm. But one of the problems is that the interface is kind of designed for typical phone range, which, as you know, you know that's like it's like right here. Mm. Well, in the car, you may have it over here. Mm -hmm. And so what they did is they got rid of the speech bubbles when you're interacting with assistant. You see the little speech bubbles in the regular size text font, and they made it way bigger and bold. So now, and and then the current interaction becomes the biggest one and highlighted. Mm. So it's kind of like accentuated. Uh, better contrast as well. Way better contrast. 
So I'm a big Google Assistant guy, and I'm actually, I look at it now and I'm surprised that it wasn't always like that because mm -hmm. of, it seems so obvious mm -hmm. for, for a voice-based interaction to amplify all that stuff. But there's still a ways to go. And uh, I mean, eventually, if it's, if it's really good, then there's no need for the screen at all mm. because your trust level with interaction and the feedback is rich. Yeah. It's just like there uh, you go. Okay. Scarlett Johansson. All right. Is that who it's was just her responding? Is that who her was? Her yeah. her was Scarlett Johansson. And you know what? Um, there was no interview with her pre movie launch. Just to kind of let people get into the like ambiance of like her being an AI. Oh, so she did no she promotion. She didn't do any promotions or interviews. Interesting. Yeah. That's a good move. Yeah. Smart. Maybe I should see this movie. <laughs> yeah, you should. All right. Sticking with Google for a second. Here's a sneak peek inside their brand new store. There's no surprises here. They pretty much did exactly what you would expect them to do. Oh, it's up already? Well, yeah. I don't believe it's open to go in, but everything is set up inside. Oh. I feel like we were talking about them making a store like well, the a thing, couple weeks ago. Well, the thing ago. was, it's, it's on the ground floor of the, the building that they're already in. So yeah. maybe it's not that big of a deal. They go move a few things around. They're like, store. There you go. No, yeah. I'm sure it's a big deal. I'm just kidding. But anyway, through the windows, you can get a sense for the style of what they're going for. And it's, like I said, it's no surprise. You got the light wood color mm -hmm. on many of the fixtures, which is very Google, very Apple, very tech, very San Francisco, whatever. I don't know what, <laughs> what you would call it. And you can see the product layout. So... I see one of those Nest Hubs. I see all the phones laid out on a table, as well as the cases and other accessories prominently featured. Shelves full of accessories. Stadia is represented with the controllers and the phone. And so this is kind of your best look hmm. for the time being. There's a couple of stools in there. What's your takeaway? There's a guy that got a theater in there as well. I oh, think yeah. you have to scroll down a little further for that. You'll see that there's a big screen and some some of those little cube chairs you can move around. Maybe they'll do presentations there. Hmm. I think you got to scroll a bit further. Yeah, they really have that like room environment. They they want to make you feel at home or something. There you go. That's a that's an image I was talking about right there. So I guess they can have you know, meeting or presentation. Mm. I don't know if they want to do classes, how Apple does it. Everyone's trying to figure it out, but it does. I mean, if we're being honest here, which of course we are, it's the only way to do the show. Mm. It feels kind of Apple inspired to me, but I don't know how else you do retail. Like, I don't, what do you do in there? Yeah. You, you got to make it feel comfortable and you got to make it, it can't, it has to be somewhat minimal because you're showcasing products at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So, but it's pretty much exactly what you would have expected it to look like. That's how I would. Yeah. That's that's essentially how I would describe it. It's really down to a science. Yeah. So There's not too many risks involved over there. Oh, this next one. I got to give a shout out, Will. This company, Spira. So a while back, and you claim to know nothing about it. But a while back, this company sent us what at the time they were referring to as the greatest water gun of ever of all time period water gun yes oh. water gun and the box was sitting there for a little while and i didn't know what it was and we just get so many products so i gotta apologize to the company because i never saw it but my kids got their hands on it and this thing is cool actually what we had was a kit with two of the original spira guns in it and this is a powered water gun, which you fill up from the front nozzle in any bucket or pool. Mm. You just, it has a pump in it and it fills up the entire chamber. Then you have this kind of like rapid fire, but it's powered. So there's no pumping, no nothing. Ta, 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 ta. Or you can hold the trigger and it will create like a super shot. So it will do three shots in one, it'll like, and you'll see the meter going down as it's filling up, and then you'll release, and it'll be like a mini hose mm. for a second. 
So I gotta give a shout out. Go check out Spirit because I never it never made it on Unbox Therapy, and uh, and it is actually as cool as they were saying it was in the Kickstarter. Oh, okay. Now the Spyro one, it was uh, it had the gauge on it, digital ammo gauge. It had a self-pressurizing tank and a battery that you charge over USB Type C mm. as well. And you can see how easy it is to fill. That's the biggest trouble with water guns. Yes. Is constantly filling it up. This one, you just poke it into any water source and blam, you're firing. Now, the Spyro 2, now, by the way, it's not cheap. I should tell you this right now. The original one was 133. I think the new one is like 150. So it's not cheap, but it is a lot of fun. The new one is going to be, yeah, 159, and it will be an even bigger blast. It will shoot 46 feet, aiming at a 45-degree angle. And I, I'm telling you, Will, uh. if I hit you with that in the leg, you're going to feel it. At a particular range, I'm going to pop. Oh. You're going to feel it. I might have to bring it in. That's the, that's the Spyro 1, but they got this number 2 coming out. Cool. And they improved it, pretty much every aspect of it. So if you scroll down, you'll see a comparison chart from one to from the first one to the second one. Actually, I think you went past it. It's up there a little bit more. Yeah, there I noticed is. that it had a digital gauge percentage of the water inside. Yes. Yes. So that's kind of cool. It will tell you how many blasts you have. Now I noticed the capacity went down a little bit. So Spyro one was twenty five blasts. Spyro two is twenty blasts. The priming speed, this is big, between shots goes down to 1.1 seconds from 1.5. Hmm. The range goes up to 30 feet from 25, or with the boost mode, a maximum range of 46 from 40, so a six-foot improvement. Hmm. A faster refill, 12 seconds instead of 14. The blast size remains the same. The tank size go down, goes down. That's why your blasts go down. I presume they did this because of weight. Hmm. It's a pretty big... It's a pretty big device at the moment. The battery life also saw an improvement, so maybe they put some extra room in there for battery. And it's another thing you have to monitor. On a full charge, how many blasts do you get? Mm. And on the new one, it's up to 2,000 individual blasts from 1125. So they mm. saw an improvement over there as well. It's going to cost 159 Man, with the summertime and the water fight, I don't know if you want to get it as a gift. I don't even know. They might be sold out right now. But my kids were having an absolute blast with the first one. Nice. So I just want to say thank you to them for sending that over because maybe I'll bring it. I'll bring it on this show, actually, as well. Okay. I'll snag one of them back, and I'll, I'll bring it on this show, and I'll show you. All right. And you can feel, you can feel it. Let, let me know if it's powerful let or not. Let me shoot my leg. Yeah, that's right. We have our latest viral uh, TikTok sensation, which is now the mystery thing all over again mm. but you remember when the mystery thing was before it was like behind this wall is oh, i don't even know what's behind the wall in this house i live in <laughs> your rendition of this uh, person here is quite <laughs> hilarious <sighs> oh, oh my god you won't believe what i found so the original one, somebody found a hole behind a mirror in the wall, and then they climbed through it, and they're like, what is this in my apartment? And then there's another version of it, which was like, I bought this old house, and there's this boarded-up room. Do I go up there? Stay tuned. Like this video. Share this video to find out more. Yeah. There's so many little tricks and tools on TikTok that feel like things that happened on YouTube a thousand years ago, and they're getting, like, repurposed. Sure. Like, scary videos or prank videos. They got a whole new... Yeah. Whether they, it's like they all happened and then they happen again for a new generation. Yeah, new medium, new generation. Like as it's if it's like reborn. Like Vine, every trick everybody pulled on Vine, and I just now it's on. Anyway, the new one is a girl who was in a hotel room and showcased a a way in which people can br can break into hotel rooms. Okay. And shared a story about her own personal experience with this style of break-in. Uh. She was in the shower at the hotel. It has all your, like, spooky aspects to it. Uh. 
maybe spooky is the wrong word because this is just like real humans, criminal behavior. You can play the clip. Is there a song? Uh, Probably. I imagine that how TikTok works. Is she going to be talking though? We don't need to hear it. You oh, see okay. the caption. So look at the hanger comes out. And apparently this is if if you're on vacation or some some people will do this activity mm. to try to get into the room and just like pull down on. Now in her personal circumstance, she's in the shower, comes out in the towel and there's two dudes there. Oh. That had you This happened for real? Yeah. Oh. In her rendition. And she's sharing this video to encourage people to use the deadbolt lock at the hotel. Mm. You know, the, the one that's above the, the more the more uh, secure lock that obviously this trick wouldn't work for. Anyway, she says you gotta like stay tuned for part two and then part <laughs> of course. it's always a part one, two, seven, and then blow up. It seems that's the trick. You want the thing to go viral, you 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 it's a cliffhanger. Yeah. And, and then, it's seven different clips to tell a very short story. Part two is usually like, oh my god, I can't believe it blew up and thank you for your support. Yeah, now it, on to part two. Yeah, exactly. Part three. Yeah. Exactly. So, but uh in this case, people are doubting her and saying she's lying. It actually took a weird turn, but oh. uh I suppose it's true. I guess people just didn't think that this would be possible. But of course, why wouldn't this be possible mm -hmm. in a hotel? And the thing is, when you're out of the room, like let's say you're at a resort and you're at the beach or the pool or something, the deadbolt is not locked. Right. And Or the chain lock or whatever you have is not locked. So that presumably this trick would work every mm -hmm. time. Although maybe there's some smarter locks out there, electronic ones that are locked from both sides when the card... No, because then you could get locked in the room. Yeah, I guess that trick always works. Yeah, I guess it does. <laughs> anyway, uh, the Hilton Hotel that she referenced that she was staying in, Hilton, the company actually reached out to her. Really? As well. They're like, how you doing? What happened at this hotel? Because uh, they want to get to the bottom. It would be criminal activity, right? Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah. Uh, they got 12 million views. If you want to hit it big on TikTok, tell a scary or mysterious story over multiple uploads. That's Please. how you win TikTok. Please do that. Uh, the Krispy Kreme story. Remember they were giving away free donuts? Mm -hmm. And you love this story. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Well, there's also a negative component to it. Because if you get, if you eat Krispy Kreme donuts every day, it's not good. And having the freedom to do so, that's, you know. I'm just playing both sides, as I do sometimes. You think one Krispy Kreme a day is really that bad? What if every? What if everything else you eat is crazy healthy, and then you just have one Krispy Kreme a day? Well, yeah, I mean, that's fine. And then it's just broccoli after that for the rest of the day. <laughs> anyway, uh, Krispy Kreme did this thing where they were trying to encourage people to get vaccinated, so they were giving away free donuts, and you kept asking me, are they still doing that? You kept asking me, how many is it in canada it is in canada Again, and they uh, are still doing it yeah. and and the question you had every time was wait how many donuts mm. yeah, well can you just go to another Krispy cream so they've given away 1.5 million donuts so far and they and they're still they're still going they're still doing it and they've upped the ante even further because they're having a day here national donut day is friday so we're gonna have to pick you're gonna we're gonna have to pick mm -hmm. some up or something i don't know uh, you don't go past there anymore, so maybe it's not going to be Krispy Kreme. We have to get Tim Hortons donuts or something. <laughs> sure, it's not the same level. Tim Hortons, step your game up, all right? Krispy Kreme, we all know what they're doing with those donuts is magic. We all know it. Anyway, it's National Donut Day on Friday, and so if you have your vaccine and you go in on Friday, now you're getting two free donuts instead of one. Mm. It's that you double it up, right? And if you don't have the vaccine and you just want one free donut, well, Friday's your day. Oh. So you get, because on National Donut Day, they're giving away free donuts. So mm. Krispy Kreme, this, is, this must have been very beneficial for them. I'm guessing what ended up, ended up happening is their sales went up because people went in there for the free donut and they bought a coffee and they bought a few, or they bought some donuts for their family or whatever. They, they uh, mm -hmm. it must have worked out because they're still talking about it and they're amping it up even further. It's been going on since March 22nd. 
our fave day, your fave deal. Both will be back this National Donut Day, Friday, June 4th. Come in for a free donut of your choice. U.S. and Canada shops, Friday 6, 4 only, while supplies last. So you could pile that one up. Look at that image, right? Look at that picture. Stop it, man. Yeah. Wait, when they come across on a conveyor like that, mm -hmm. with the with the the icing, which is like fully encapsulates the donut. They're plump. Yeah, and they start to brown up and plump up a little bit as they float past. But it's some there's something about that thin icing though. You can still see the donut in there. Uh -huh. That glaze over there. Yeah. Wow. I don't know if you understand, Will. <laughs> I do, thoroughly. It's great. <laughs> yeah. It's a beautiful sight. All right, so Donut Day on Friday. Okay, uh, a couple of YouTube trending-related stories. Uh, audio, music. So we were talking yesterday about Jake Paul versus Tyron Woodley. Uh -huh. But almost, it's it's funny because that fight got announced, and I this whole it's all very calculated with the timing and stuff. Yesterday, mm -hmm. we can talk about that, but really, the more impending thing here is the Logan Paul fight, the Floyd fight. I didn't even realize how close it was. Yeah, this Sunday. This Sunday? Yep. So, did they do enough promotion, or have I just... No, they, they didn't. They didn't, no. Because I'm feeling like, I'm sure they're going to make plenty of money, but I can't help it because you know when McGregor... And Mayweather fought. Yes. They did a world tour. I was there at, uh, where was it? Molson. Budweiser Stadium. Budweiser Stage, whatever they call it. Sure. It's had so many names in the course of my life down there near the exhibition. Uh, or no, near Ontario Place. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you had McGregor and Mayweather. I was right there in the front row when they were going back and forth. It was hilarious. Mm -hmm. But they, it, and that promotion may have been too big because I think they got pretty wiped out. Mm -hmm. Traveling to different countries. But man, it worked. It put, it put a lot of money down that thing. But then yeah. again, so did the, the Jake Paul, Ben Askren. People are just bored right now. Mm -hmm. People are looking for any content to wake them up. Seems worth watching or whatever. But you have a weird day. It's a Sunday. And... It crept up, so that's why I was asking about. They only did the one real in-person thing that I can recall. But either way, whatever, they'll sell it. It doesn't matter. But we have a, a video on trending. This is from Logan Paul's main channel promoting the fight. This should do, this should help, because here you have three and a half million views. Here you have uh, number nine on trending right now. And uh, the question is, Will, and, and, and you're going to watch a little bit of this clip. You can just scroll forward maybe halfway. Are you? Does this look good to you? Are you impressed with this training, or have you already seen this clip? I, I saw the video. Here. Okay. Um, I was more concentrating on the actual edit. Interesting. And, and that was good. I, I like the edit. So, um, <laughs> but uh, I mean, the training—it's all. This is all promo. It, it doesn't. It's not like a workout session. And there's no sparring. Mm -hmm. But he's yeah. hitting the bag. Sure. There, he's sweating. Yeah. He, he's there's very he's never wearing a shirt. Yeah. In the whole thing, there's a lot of skipping and air punching. <laughs> hey hitting, man. Hey man. No, nothing Jeez. wrong with that. <laughs> hitting the heavy bag too. <laughs> um, it's a good promo video. I would I would say. Well, but, no, because you kind of just said the opposite. You kind of were just like, well, there's no real. There's no takeaway here. You're like it was a nice no. edit, but <laughs> I'm hyped up. You were like you were I, like there's a lot of air punching. I, I thought what you meant to say was like, you know, to see his skills in action. Well, and no, I, actually, I don't, I don't see it in this video. Where I was going was, did this video do anything for you as far as believing that he has any kind of chance? That's <laughs> that was my question. He has a puncher's chance. Well, but. okay, so that's a way of saying no. Yeah. All right. I was just because because really that's the goal here, right? If you want people to buy it, they have to believe he has a chance. Now everybody, any everybody and anybody has a chance. Uh -huh. yeah. So I hear you on that standpoint, but the goal of a clip like this is to convince people that anything can happen. Right. Yeah. But you're saying it didn't do it for you. No. Okay. 
I was just concentrating on the edit. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> and the air punching. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's on trending. A lot of people watched it. So uh, 260,000 thumbs up. I think they're going to sell a few of these things anyway. Whatever. Uh -huh. they, don't, they, don't, they don't need Willie Do's money. Although they might get it anyway. All right. Last one of the day. And uh, since I was on trending, looking around, uh. the Logan Paul one was the easy one to pick. But then I bumped into this absolute gem right here. Okay. And this is my first exposure to Grupo Ferme, Hablemos. Official video. This was this is also on trending number 25. It's got like 1.1 million views. And this is a music group that I had not encountered previously. And this whole video yeah. and this whole song, and I don't like to say this, but I don't have another way to phrase it. It's a vibe. And I didn't want to say that because, you know, it gets overused. But this made me feel a way. This put me at ease. Did it really? This gave me hope. Hmm. This made me, this was, it was an absolute, look at the outfit over here, Will. Just one time I want you to show up to this show with that shirt. Just uh, one time with the lion and the flowers. Oh, okay. And every guy in this video is, it's a group of guys around, you but just play a little bit. Play a little bit with the audio. Play a little bit with the audio, please. Tiny bit right here. Oh my goodness. He takes a drink. He's got the Michelob Ultra. Play a little, play a little bit more, Will. Yes, yes. There's a, there's some kind of tuba in the background. They got a tuba and a full group of guys standing around hmm. the pool, and he's got this outfit over here, and he's feeling it emotionally. And they got a cooler full of Michelob Ultra. <laughs> I hope they got a few. I hope they got a few dollars from that. But it is so casual. I feel like. You know, I'm a fly on the wall. There's no walls out there because you're around the pool. But I feel like I could encounter such a thing huh. and just fully become engulfed in the entire atmosphere. They've created an atmosphere here. Mm -hmm. It's no fancy effects or uh, like cr a crazy type of uh, uh, music video. You know how music videos, it gets over the top and, and they try to make it as... Uh, flashy as possible there's no flash here this is, they set up and the only thing that's flash is the outfit but i feel like this guy can pull that outfit in real life he might show up to the grocery store in that outfit that's how comfy he looks in that outfit are those uh batman sandals i think it's probably some type of designer sandal will how dare oh, okay. you Fen it looks like the bat let us hear a little bit of it will come on we can hear like oh. 20 seconds please come on man you got it Oh my goodness gracious. These people, you don't know. You gotta play yeah. no, no, a little bit more, a little bit more. Please. Yes. Yes. Okay, we got it, we got it, we got it, we got it, we got it. See, I just needed to you to hear the voice, Will. And I don't know if we're gonna get the Very copyright good. on it, but but I, like this is Very I'm promoting soulful. I'm promoting a song, so don't give me the copyright on it. I'm saying every so often for every TikTok, for every uh, exposure that gives you just some sort of pit in your stomach, every click you wish you had back, every dark moment, every hole, every vortex, every all those times you, felt, felt, uh, you, 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 you find yourself at the end of an empty click or worse than an empty click. Uh, a negative click where you were like, is that what it is now? Is that where we're at now? Is that 2021 now? Yeah. And then every so often. There's a surprise. You bump into a Hablamos. <laughs> like this. Yeah. And I had a moment over there. I was sitting there reading the news and I had a moment over there. You close your eyes and felt the breeze. You don't know what I did. I reached up to the keyboard where the volume was, and I tapped it twice to the upper direction. Oh, that's rare. So I just want to thank them for that, for okay. putting together that entire mood right there. And, 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 and I don't like to say it, vibe, mood, all these things. Uh -huh. You better save that terminology when you need it. Uh -huh. Don't say that everything is that. 
Don't tell me that some, just like one lazy meme gets that same description as this right here. Because what they put together over there, that's what deserves it. Mm -hmm. Well, there it is. You don't have a wild card, do you? No, I don't. Okay, all right. No. We good. <laughs>